Lord for that song, amen. And our scripture this morning will come from John, the sixth chapter. Amen. You've been so faithful, God. We say thank you. John chapter six, I will begin reading at verse 66. John 6, 66. And I'll read down through verse 69. And the scripture says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. The word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Yes, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. First, God, we want to tell you thank you for your faithfulness. God, you continue to show yourself mighty and strong in our lives over and over again. And for that, God, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, God, that you continue to make ways when there's been no way, God. You continue to heal even when the doctor says there is no cure. God, you continue to bless us, God, over and over, even when our bank account says the opposite. And for that, God, we say thank you. Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to come into your house and praise your name. We bless your name that your Holy Spirit is already here. And God, so we thank you right now that you have a plan for us on today. God, we thank you that we are going to praise your holy name and that we are not going to allow the enemy to stop us yes, from God. opening up our mouths. Yes, we will not God. allow him to stop us from clapping our hands. Yes, we will not allow him to stop us from giving your name praise and honor and glory. Yes, God. Why, God? Because you deserve it, God. So, God, we just ask now that you would bless our pastor, that you would continue, God, to use him, Father. Thank what you've already placed in his spirit. But in the name of Jesus, we believe that you're going to take them higher on today, God. That you'll take them beyond the notes on today, God. That the Holy Spirit will fall fresh on him, God. Use him, God, until you are satisfied. And God will give your name honor, praise, and glory for everything you will say to us on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen.
serve a wonderful God. I know we oftentimes attribute the word wonderful to a lot of things, but oftentimes we got to understand that attribute only belongs to God Himself. How many know He's wonderful? I think that's what I think I call Him. He said He's wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, the everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. As we come today, we do give God glory, thanking Him for whom all blessings do flow. How many do you understand that, that the Lord has done great things for you in this week's journey? If you can look back over life, how many know He spared you for such a time as this? Amen. We look back over time and understand that, that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, I believe somebody could testify today. That God was with me through all the things that I have been through. We do greet you in the name that is above every name today. And that is the name of Jesus, the Christ. As we come, we do thank God for all the things that he does and for who he is. And when we look back over, it is only because of him that we live and move and have our being. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise today. I can't say enough about our health ministry Amen. and the great opportunity that they afford us to strive to keep us safe. I, I look back on it. Yeah, open that door so I can give them the accolades today. Amen. I do thank God for what you do. Amen. 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 Let's give them the hand clap of faith. They have worked so diligently to keep us safe in here for those who are able to come out. And, and, and I pray that even when I come, I, I, I do thank God, Sister Amanda Bowman, who heads up our health ministry, is doing a great job. I don't mind telling Facebook, you're doing a great job. Amen. And I, I wouldn't say that that's a job, but it's a ministry, and you are very authentic in your ministry today. We do thank God for what you do. Amen. Sometimes it, it is good to give honor to whom honor is due. And when we honor those, God in turn blesses us. Amen? Amen. So as we come today, we do thank God for all the ministries that are still relevant, still working, still striving to do the will of God. And understandably so, they don't do it for mankind to be seen. Amen? Amen. They do it because God has proved good to them. And God has assigned them a specific ministry to be able to do it. We do thank God for them. Scripture has already been read from uh, John, the 6th chapter, verses 66 through verse 69 by Reverend Marcus. As we come, we ask that you would just give credence to the understanding uh, to talk about this morning the point of no return. The point of no return. Thank you. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all the things that you've already done. You've established us for such a time as this. And for that, Lord, we give your name the glory. We thank you for smiling on us and granting us favor today to be able to come to your house of worship. And as we enter your gates, Lord, with thanksgiving into your courts with praise, we're thankful, Lord, that you still allow us the opportunity to come and minister to your people. Use us, Father, for your glory. Open up doors, that, Father, that no man can shut. Shut doors that no man can open. And as, Lord, you increase and we decrease, we know that you will take, Lord, us to the, to the heights that you would have us to go. And you will be able to deliver and to make free today those who have been in the bondage and the perils of sin. I pray, Father, that you move in a special way. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen. The point of no return. That comes a time in all of our lives where maturity takes control and we learn to face the realities of life. Mm -hmm. There's such a thing as you can't hide your face in the sand no more. Amen. You have to deal with reality. 
And there comes a time even in growing up, I believe we all have faced it. We were footloose and fancy free as long as we could be. But there comes a time when uh, the parents start putting thorns in the nest. And they started getting you to the point of actually being on your own. And whenever you got to the point of being on your own, and my son called it, get my own space. Yeah. I said, when you get your own space, you'll understand the pressures yeah. of what it takes in this life. How I many you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Some have got to that point and, and, and have, have not really been set up to face reality. Mm-hmm. That it's hard out here. It's hard to be able to, to survive and be able not only to take care of my own self, but take care of the family. Yeah. And, and we're living in a day by which we've got to, to uh, make ready the people mm-hmm. for where they're going. Yeah. I'm so glad today that, that, that even as they have opened up the school systems and, and have allowed them to still go forward, my prayer is with them daily that, that God will cover them. Yeah. Because they're faced with some things today. Yeah. Not only with, with, with the events on the outside, but they're faced with scrutiny on the inside of being able to teach and being able to bring understanding to a people who are looking on in everywhere, in every location, trying to figure out why am I here. Amen. So when I look back, sometimes you have to step out on that point of no return. Because we, we all got to experience that. I believe Peter experienced that when he stepped out the boat. And people want to talk about Peter, but so much. We're going to talk about Peter in a little bit, but, but Peter made up his mind. Lord, if you do it, I believe you can allow me to do it also. And needless to say, there comes a time, brothers and sisters, you've got to be able to step off the boat. You've got to be able to step out by faith. Not on your own intuition, but you've got to be able to step out by faith. Now comes a point by which, you know, you can be able, and God will show you, you are able to walk on what everybody else is thinking in. I wish I had a witness in here. How many just had to trust God? Somebody, God had blessed you with businesses and blessed you with things or, or bought you out, and you went into retirement, didn't know why you was going to make it, but they retired you anyhow, and God made, you, made things better than when you were working. I ain't got too many tired for me to have, but, but can testify that God made a way out of no way. Seemed like when you were, wasn't ready for it, God said, you're ready. You don't know it yet, but you're ready. So when I look back at it, I believe that we all have some Bible scholars in here that says you can't look back. When we began to look back, we become a figment of what we could or what we should not have been. Mm-hmm. Let me invite your attention back to the book of Genesis. The Bible said that when God got ready to, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, mm-hmm. and the Bible said that God got Lot and his wife and his, and his children and said, come on here. We ain't got time to waste around and say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. You got to come on and make haste. He said, don't even stop in the plains, but go up into the mountains because you want to escape the danger that's coming right here. I mean, can testify today. But there was a point by which even he, the angels grabbed them by the hand and said, come on here, come on out, or you want to be consumed with those who have committed such sin. Now, God want to spare your life, but if you want to hold on to some stuff, you got to understand, you're going to suffer the penalty with them. God got them and took them by the hand and brought them out. But the Bible said that Lot's wife, she looked back. And when she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. Which allows us to understand when you have reached that point of no return, don't you look back. Don't you look back or your mind may want to be and your body may want to go back. Sometimes we look at it and sometimes we say, well, I wish I had done stuff better back in the day. Well, back in the day is gone. You got to understand all you got is right now. I wish I had somebody listen, look down the aisle and say, all you got is right now. That's all you got right now. And the future looks a lot brighter if you apply your faith to it. That comes a time when you got to understand that the word of God means what it says and says what it means. 
There comes a point when you've got to be like the Apostle Paul. You've got to forget those things which are behind yeah. and press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. You've got to press. Yeah. Says when you look back there, Sister Kelly, when you look back at what the Apostle Paul was saying, he was saying sometimes you're going to have adversity facing you. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have things that want to keep you in that lockdown position. But you've got to be able to persevere and say, I'm going on in spite of the Spirit of the Lord leads me to go on. Guess what? Where he leads me, I will follow. Yeah. When we understand this point in life, it reminds me of a little story of a man whose family was content on sitting on the dock side with their feet in the water because they couldn't swim. They was content to kick around in the water, to frolic in the water. They may even get down to where it was knee deep, but they wouldn't go no further. And the man looked over and saw somebody with some scuba gear on um, that come up out of the water and had all the, the materials on that they can go deep sea dive. And he realized that there was a realm of which he never experienced before. Brothers and sisters, as all of us have that point of understanding, sometimes we want to keep our feet in the water, but God said, get on in there. Get on in there. And sometimes God will allow you to understand you can go some places by which your flesh tells you you can't go. I wish I had some witnesses in here. Well, let me take the text. The, the text leads us to where Jesus has just fed the 5,000 with a lunch, uh, a lad's lunch of two small fish and five barley loaves. I believe Dr. Ballard called them biscuits before. That was a point by which there was, a, there was more people than there was substance there. But we find that Jesus prayed. And when he prayed, the Bible said that God gave increase. How many know that in my prayer life there will be increase if I pray in the right spirit? And the Bible said they, they, that God fed the 5,000 and they took up 12 baskets of fragments after that. When we begin to look at it, God always gives you more than enough. Oh, I wish I had somebody to say I serve a God who gives me more than enough. He gives me more than what I have because he knows somewhere down the line I'm going to need more to get to where I'm going. Yeah. I wish I had somebody when we look at this conversation this was the understanding that we get that when Jesus fed the 5,000 mm -hmm. he had those who would follow him and went across the sea and, and came to where he was mm -hmm. only because they fed, he fed them on the other side. And the Bible said Jesus understood their motive. Uh -huh. He understood why they were following him. Yeah. That's why, Jesus, you got to be careful about what you do and why you do what you do. Yeah. Because the Lord don't look at that suit or that dress. He looks at the intent of your heart. Yeah. He looks at why you did what you did. Uh -huh. He looks at your motive and he looks clean down into the heart and, and understands that there's a pure motive. When we look at Jesus, Jesus said, you follow me for the reasons that you should not. You follow me because I, you, you, you ate of the, you were fed with the 5,000 and you ate and you follow me for that reason. But he said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. And that was a hard saying for them to understand because they were still stuck on the fish and the barley loaf. But Jesus was talking about spiritual food. Yeah. How many know what I'm talking about today? You see, God will always allow you to get in a predicament where you see only him. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we've been handicapped. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. The church has been handicapped. Mm -hmm. Can I say that again? Yeah. The church has been handicapped. Before this pandemic, we had folk that were coming to church and they didn't know why they were coming to church. check your mood. He want to check the purity of why you do what you do. How many glad to know that God checked my, my, my thoughts, my inner being and found out that my reason for coming is because he's been so good to me. I wish 
wish I had somebody that could testify in here. I ain't here to see nobody. I ain't here to see what you got on. I'm not here to see and be seen, but I've come to give God the glory. That's why there's some goodness that come out of this pandemic. There's some goodness that come out of here because it checks your motive. It checks your motive for doing what you do. And I'm so glad that God permits us to go from place to place. Every now and then I throw my little mask on and go out, Brother George, and say, God, you cover me from danger seen and unseen danger. That's the stuff I can't see, but I want you just to cover me with the awesomeness of your grace. How many thank God today? It could have been me. I'm going to leave this alone. I got to go on. Brother Bram, it could have been me. Been caught up in the statistics of life. But I look back over it and say, if the Lord was with me, his hand of protection was all about me. Let me go on here. We find that Jesus points out to them, unless you eat of my flesh. And drink of my blood, you have no life in you. Uh -huh. Jesus explained to them, your fathers, your forefathers, ate of the manna which came down from heaven. Uh -huh. But I'm here today to tell you, he said, I am the bread of life. Yes. When you take of me, you shall never grow hungry. Uh -huh. and, and I'm so glad that when you look at this, Jesus was putting them on a path to relationship. I hope we understand that, that I'm not just following him because he, he fills my pockets. I may know that I can serve him even with some empty pockets sometimes. It's not because of what he gives me. It's not because of what he done for me. Not only in the past, present, or future. I just serve him because he's God all by himself. How many know, how many know that the things that you face on a daily basis, you got to give God glory for? Yeah. Because if it had not been for the Lord who broke the chain of addiction in your life, how many can stand up and testify, I was out there. Yeah. I was way out there. But when Jesus came in, yeah. he turned some things around. Yeah. And if you only knew who I was back yonder, he was like, surely he didn't bring you through all that. But I wish I had somebody that could just lift your hand today and say, God has bought me from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. That's why when you reach that point of no return, you got to understand you're closer to your breakthrough. You're closer to what God has for you. We find that the Bible says, as John reflects, that from that time forth, many disciples walked away from him and went back. That's, that word back means apostasy. They went backwards. How many can look at your life today and say, I'm not, I don't have nowhere else to go? How many can make up in your mind today? I know the Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. But he ain't, he's from up me. He's got somewhere. He's taking me. I haven't got there yet. But I'm on my way. When we look at it, I, I, I'm looking forward to what the Lord has for me. That's when Peter spoke up. Peter, then the outspoken one of the group, answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? And when he looked at that point, when we find that point, that's when we look at Peter and Jesus said, will y'all also go away? Uh -huh. But Simon Peter answered him and said, to whom shall we go? That's the first point I want to bring out. Peter said, where are we going? Uh -huh. The folk who used to be with us, they won't run with us no more. Uh -huh. They call us holy roads and call us all kind of names. They don't even want to associate themselves with us. So I can't go back where I used to go. I can't go back to whom I used to go. I left my father Zebedee and all them other folk back under. And that comes a point when you walk out from the world that the world won't take you back. I mean, no, I'm glad of that point. I'm glad he bought me out of some stuff. 
How many know what I'm talking about? Yes. See, God has been good to you. Yes. There's some things that you face that other folk have to go through classes to get out of. Yes. But how many know God broke the chain? Yes. How many can look around and say he broke the chain? He not only split the chain, but he broke the chain. Yes. And when he broke the chain, he allowed me to know that I'm not only free, but free indeed. Peter's response was, to whom shall we go? Then we observe what Peter says unto the Lord Jesus. He said, to whom shall we go? Not only to whom shall we go, he said, you have the word of eternal life. And he said, there's something about your words. You're just not a mere mortal. Your words are a road map to eternity. It is your word that allows me access to the portal of glory. It's your words that are a lamp unto my feet. And it's your words that is a light unto my path. I've got to look at this thing that we've got to understand that the word of God gives us direction. How many glad to know where you're going? You've got to have some direction. You got to have some 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 discipline about your life. You got to follow where he leads me. Now sometimes I've been on some roads that how many know you're going down the road they put a roadblock up. But I thank God for the little detours that takes me around the dangers and puts me right back on the path and it keeps me going to my location. Now there are some folk you got to understand when they come to that point they say, Oh, which way do I go? You gotta follow the detour. Uh -huh. You gotta follow the route that was plotted for you so that you can get back home. How many know sometimes God requires us to change? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He never changes, but He requires change out of our lives. How many know some people are still stuck back in when we started the pandemic wow. and say, Which way do we go? But I found out a long time ago that there's no weapon formed against me. Uh -huh. That shall prosper. And every time a weapon is formed, God will make a way of escape. How many glad about it today? That when I look back over time, I'm not going to make no excuse of why I can't serve the Lord. I'm not going to make no excuse of why I can't be where God wants me to be. Why? Because everywhere He sets me, He allows an open door for me. How many know He'll open the door for you? That no man can shut. And when he opens that door, you've got to be prepared to go through. Yeah. Let me rush on. He says, not only do we, to whom shall we go? He said, thou hast the words of eternal life. And not only that, when I come down, this is the best reason of all. He said, and we believe that thou art the Christ. Yes. The son of the living God. There's sometimes, brothers and sisters, you can't go on what you've heard. You've got to go on what you know your own self. And when you go on what you know, that's why every now and then God will give me a flashback and show me what could have happened and what would have happened. But God didn't let it happen because we believe that thou art the Christ. How many know you got to remind yourself of whose you are yes. and where you're going. I'm not just following the Baptist tradition, Amen. but I'm following the risen Lord, Jesus Christ himself. Yes. I'm following him because he came for me. Yes. And what the Peter was talking about, he said, now escape all this other stuff. We believe, I believe says that you're the one. You're the one whom we can follow. You're the one in my time of need that I can count on when the chips are down. You're the one that will make salvation possible for mankind. And I'm so glad he didn't stop there. He helped us to understand that even though I have nobody else to go to, you have the words of eternal life. How many glad you believe today that thou art the Christ. How many know I can stand on that word today? How many know that it's that word that thou of the Christ that brings me through my dark times? It's the word thou of the Christ that lets me know when sickness comes and wants to invade my body. It's the 
the words thou art the Christ lets me know that he's still a healer. Do I have a witness in the house today that can testify and say that I know that he's real? They used to have a whole soul. He's real. He's real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gives me victory. So many people doubt him. But I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. And if he's real to you today, you got to affirm that thing every now and then. You got to tell the devil, you got to get back. Because I serve the risen Lord. I serve the God who came down through 40 and 2 generations. He came down and was born in Bethlehem. John said he was in the beginning and the world knew him not. He was in the beginning and he made everything that was made. I'm so glad he didn't stop there. The same Jesus. Say the same Jesus. This same Jesus went and died for my sin. This same Jesus hung between heaven and earth and gave his precious blood that I may have a right to the tree of life. Don't fool me now. I got to go back and reaffirm my belief that as I know he died on a Friday. I'm so glad he didn't say he went in a coma. He didn't say he was just passed out. He said he died. I'm glad today he died. But they put him in Joseph Barber too. I'm talking about the gospel now. See, we've been asphyxiated on niceties of life, of what I can get out of. But somebody's got to reaffirm your beliefs today and say, I know they put him in Joseph's tomb. But early, I said, early, early, what Friday is going Oh! 
Oh, yes. Why do I do what I do? It's because my belief is that strong to know that he won't take me nowhere where I can't come through. I got a belief today. I can come to the point of no return. Ain't nothing else back here that I need to go back to. How many can look back over life and say where I am, he brought me. What I know, he taught me. And when I look back over it, there's some things that should have killed me. How do I know what anybody know what I'm talking about? That sickness should have took me out of here. But how many could just take your right hand, reach over to your left hand, and check your pulse and say, I'm still here? By the grace of God, some may not like it, some may say he's gone too far, but I haven't gone far enough when I look back from where he brought me from. I understand, I owe God a praise. I owe him to say thank you because you brought That when I've done, it's not what I've done. But I cannot do 
but when he's at fault with him, it gives him glory for all the things he's done for me. Because he's been just that good. Yeah. Yeah. When I look back on the best things that she took me out of here. But what the devil did for my back, I wish I had somebody to get it. And God did it for my good. And he turned some things around. Thank you. Folk lied to do things to me. And God let me keep on. They will take something on one side. And God give me more on this side. You can't beat God again. No matter how you try. And when I look back home, now I remember what they said in the old church. It's getting late in the It's getting late.
this world. They get dark sometimes. But I know he's a light in the midst of darkness. I have nowhere else to go. There may be someone in this place today or on Facebook Live. Maybe you have come to that crossroads of life. And you're trying to figure out which way do I go. They call his name Jesus. And I believe if you call him, he'll come to you. How many believe that today? If you open the door of faith and say, Thou art the Christ, and let him in, that he'll be one who is able to save you. Amen. And I'm so glad today that the, the invitation is still here. Is there one today that may not know the Lord in the free part of this and step out by faith? Step out by faith and he will meet you right where you need. Is there one today? Is there one that want to come and join by, by Christian, by a church, by Christian experience? Or by that? You may come and do so. Is there one? Bow your head now. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the flower of the field and the grass was with us. But it's your word that shall not pass away. Father, we thank you for maybe those who have come to you, Lord, over things for life. Pray, pray that you've touched the heart of every man that has viewed this your word. I pray that, Father, that, Lord, you bring increase to their life. Yes. Let them know that they open up their heart and allow you to come in, that you'll be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Today, Lord, we thank you, thank you. for the lives, dear Father, that, Lord, may have accepted, Lord, you today. Yes. We ask that you bless them, Father, Lord, to come and join your church that teaches and preaches and believes in the word. That they may use and may be used for your, for your purpose, Father, and be used for your glory. Today we thank you. In Jesus' name. And they all said amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you.
wisdom, you can do so by visiting www.givelifey.com. We also have prayer, intercessory prayer on Thursdays. If you would like to dial in, it's a free call. Dial in on Thursdays at 7.30. You can visit our website for the dial-in information or contact the church to get that information. We are so very grateful for you and we pray that God continues to bless you and that you are able to join in. And one day as the Lord leads you that you will be able to join us physically. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless your name, God, for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for your word that has gone forth and that you have taught us, God. Father, we just ask you right now that you would continue to help us to remember this word. God, we serve you. We are committed to you. We are at a point of no return. God, we pray right now that you would bless our pastor, pastor and that you would continue to strengthen him and that you would continue to speak to him and that you would continue to anoint him and use him for your glory. 